Vito. Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash Ganglin comes the mysterious, all-powerful character who is a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone, but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. Today's episode of the Fox feature, The Blue Beetle, is the second part of the story entitled The Underworld Goes Underground. Reginald Dunlap, head of the Dunlap Construction Company, has asked his friend, Dan Garrett, to make a private investigation of the many mysterious accidents that have occurred during tunnel operations under the Eastern Valley River. Due to certain political angles involved, Dan tells Dunlap he'll get the Blue Beetle to do the job. As the Blue Beetle... Dan Garrett, disguised as a tunnel worker, makes an investigation, but is discovered, and after a fight, is ordered into the airlock by the superintendent of the job to be decompressed before ascending to the surface. With the Blue Beetle in the airlock is a man named Burke, a faithful employee whom Stanley, the superintendent, dislikes and has just discharged. As the first episode ended, Stanley and some of his hirelings are decompressing the air in the chamber more quickly than is safe, in the hope that the Blue Beetle and Burke will be killed as a result. As our story opens, we are in the airlock with Burke and the Blue Beetle. What are we going to do, Blue Beetle? We're chapped and the air pressure is going down so fast I can feel the cramps coming on in my legs. Now, grit your teeth, old man, and bear it as well as you can. Just as soon as I can locate the valves in this darkness, I'll stop the decompression. There must be some control inside as well as outside this chamber. Why... I think there is. Over there to your right. I've found them. Lucky I had my flashlight with me. It's getting cold in here. That's caused by the expanding air. It draws heat from surrounding objects. Well, I, I hope you can get us out of here quickly. That's just what I don't want to do. Now, there. I'm shutting off the valves here. Well, what about Stanley and the gang outside at the tunnel under the airlock? They can't get in here now. The door opens outward and the pressure from their side is too great. We'll just take it easy for a while and let our bodies adjust themselves to the reduced pressure. Then I'll let a little more air out until the pressure inside is the same as that in the elevator shaft at the other side of the chamber. But, but the cold, I'm freezing. Here, put on this sweater of mine. Yeah, but what about you? I don't need it. I can stand the cold. I've conditioned myself to it. Well, thanks, then. Boy, this is going to feel grand. How's the bends? Better. I guess it must have been my imagination. I'll let a little more air out. Ah, that's more like it. That'll give us about 15 more minutes in here. Then it'll be safe to get out of here. Boy, will I be glad. Hey, Burke, how many of the men do you think are loyal to Mr. Dunlap? Most of them. It's only the muckers that are new on this job. Them and Superintendent Stanley. The muckers are the men who shovel or haul away the muck that's drilled away from in front of the shield? Yeah, that's right. We sand hogs, that is, the drillers gave him that name. Hmm. Certainly fits that bunch of cutthroats who attacked us. Yeah, they're a pretty slimy bunch. Did you ever work under Stanley before? No, never. Know anything about him? Only that he's a son of Assemblyman Stanley from the 3rd Election District. Hmm. His last job, I believe, was a foreman of a job on the West Coast. How'd you like to do young Dunlap a favor? Oh, sure. He's always treated me all right, as his father before him. What do you want me to do? Keep your mouth shut about this whole thing. Well, what about my job? Let them fire you. Mr. Dunlap will take care of you until this matter's all cleared up. Then you'll get a real job, if I have anything to do with it. Okay. I don't know nothing. Oh, that's on the shaft side. I'm going to open up. Hello over there. Hello over there. Now give me my sweater back. I want to put on my disguise again. Okay. Here. Yeah. Here it is. And thanks a lot. You're welcome. Open up in there. Are you all right? Yeah, just a minute. happened? Going down to the tunnel, but we didn't get any answer. Oh, nothing's wrong. There was a fight, and me and Burke got fired. Yeah, Stanley fired us. We won our pay. I didn't get it at the office. I'm going to find out what's wrong in the tunnel. Nothing's wrong, except there's a few of the wrong kind of rats in it. Come on, Burke. We need some fresh air. Now, here's 
the blueprint of the entire project. And here, here is a detailed print of the air system in the tunnel. Spag, our engineer in charge of the pumps, will know what to do when I give him the go-ahead. Now, your job, Fluky, is to see that the steel emergency curtain is jammed. So it won't fall when the explosion blows a hole through the roof and lets the river flood the tunnel. Sure, I got you. We want to make this accident a good one. You can count on me, boss. But make sure you get into the airlock as quickly as possible. I don't want to lose any of our men. Well, how are you going to work it? Some of us are working up at the shield. I'll be right there where the water will break through first. Well, I'll see that they get a signal in advance. They'll suddenly decide to strike. They don't like the conditions under which they're working. Now, all of you men... Those that I've hired start back toward the airlock to the decompression chamber before coming up out of the tunnel. When most of you are near the airlock, I'll give the signal. And Mr. Reginald Dunlap's construction company can wind up its affairs. Hey, what's that noise? A blue beetle. A blue beetle, beetle. yes. And he's going to nip. You're unwise to get in my way again, blue beetle. I failed last time, but this time I'm going to make sure. (laughs) Missed me, but I won't miss you, Stanley. That's for Dunlap, and that's for Burke, and... Don't let this guy get through here. Hit him with something fluky. Bullets ain't no good against the blue beetle. Here's a chair out. Sit in it. And that takes care of you. I'll just take these plans and be on my way. I don't think there'll be any more accidents, Mr. Stanley. I... Boy, what a wallop he packs. Hey, Stanley. Hey. What about it? He's got our plans. The blue beetle exposes. Uh, let him try it. He's an outlaw, wanted by the police. He doesn't dare appear in any court to testify. Besides... Those blueprints are meaningless after the danger's done. Now, what are you going to do? Phone Scraggs and tell him to pull the job at once. Hello? The little apothecary shop. Hey, Doc. Phone the police and have Assemblyman Stanley's home surrounded... And he and his son arrested immediately. Tell them to have Central record any conversations from either house. Okay, Danny. Where are you? On my way to the Mid-City Tunnel to try to stop a sabotage job. Anything else? Yes. Phone all hospitals to have ambulances and pool motors sent over right away. Got that? Yes, yes. Okay. The Blue Beetle has to work fast. Goodbye, Doc. Goodbye, Danny. There's been an accident below. Explosion. Blowed a hole through the riverbed. Anybody hurt? Well, I don't know yet. Blue Beetle's down there. Blue Beetle? What's he doing? Rescuing sand hogs, I heard. Well, he can do it if anybody can. I read a while back where he saved 15 lives. Oh, let me in. Let me in. The water's coming. Let me in. I was here first. I've got a wife and kids. Take it easy. One at a time. Now, back up there. Let him throw off. Oh, the water. The water. It's around my feet. One at a time through that door. There's room for all in the airlock. Oh, we're the river's breaking through. The emergency door gave way. Here comes the water. In you come. That's the last man, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Good. Now, help me with this door. Come on, come on. Let's get on you. That's got it. Well, we're safe now. Saved. Saved. Every man saved by the Blue Beetle. Danny, how do you feel after your strenuous battle today? Oh, I feel fine. That 2X formula certainly puts the vitality in this old carcass of mine. Uh, you did a brave and noble thing tonight, Danny. Saving all those men. Well, that was the Blue Beetle's work, Doc. Yes, yes. But the Blue Beetle is Dan Garrett. And Dan Garrett is... is vice versa. And you know who's a happy man tonight? Uh, Reggie Dunlap, I suppose. Now that his enemies have been exposed... Yes, yes, I guess he's happy. But I don't mean him. I mean Burke. Burke? Yes, Burke, the man who got fired when Stanley discovered my Blue Beetle disguise in the tunnel. Well, what about Burke? Well, Burke took over the operation of the pumps. And as a reward for his work, Reggie has given him that job permanently. Ah, that's splendid. Well, uh, what are you going to do now? Well, Doc, with the compliments of the management of Dr. Fran's little apothecary shop, I'm going to make myself a great big strawberry ice cream soda. Oh, fine. Fine, Danny. That, that's a great idea. And, 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 you know, I think I'll have one with you. Uh, come out in front of the store. Uh, we'll sit up at the counter and be our own best customers. <laughs> Uh, 
And so the Blue Beetle performed another noble deed and brought some dishonest crooks to justice. The moral of this story is that loyalty such as that of Burke, the Sandhog, brings its just rewards. What further adventures await the Blue Beetle in his one-man crusade against crime? This question will be answered in the next episode of the Blue Beetle. copyrighted Fox feature, appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine and the Blue Beetle Magazine. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in to The Blue Beetle.